fast. I'm gonna record it because uh, there's a lot of missing people right now. Uh, it's recording now. Uh, I think yesterday we were we were we 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 began already to talk about the Italian Renaissance. Okay. Now today I'm going to um, okay before to continue the class yesterday class. Uh, I loaded up already also the, the video, okay? Uh, for the ones who didn't, who missed it yesterday. Now, in your platform, you have already uh, your assignments. The vocabulary, remember, uh, we are starting the second term, and then you have to fold your page, and then uh, the, the, the topic is the Italian, the Italian Renaissance. So write in your notebook, Italian Renaissance, and under that title, write, your vocabulary number one, okay? Vocabulary number one, and on this page 558, you will find the vocabulary, okay? Write it down, and also, at the end of the chapter that today is the last day, uh, you need to do this assessment, and please write, write the assessments, and write the answers over here. Write assess, assess, assessment number one, and then write the answers of all these questions. Question one, A, B, C, and question two, A, B, C, that's it. Those are very simple and very easy questions to answer. So please try to do it in your notebook. Why? Because eventually I'm going to ask for them. Okay? Voy a, voy a preguntar por ellos. Okay? Y después no diga, ah, de, de, yo no lo hice. Le voy a bajar punto por eso. Todos deberían pasar por cinco. Okay? By the way, over here I loaded up, uh, loaded up already the, the PowerPoint presentation that uh, I'm using it uh, to, uh, to carry on this class. Okay? Okay, now let's finish then this chapter that uh, I started. Yo, yo lo comencé la semana, yo lo comencé ayer, ¿verdad? Kiwani, ¿verdad? Sí, okay. I sí, por Sí, creo que ya le hablé de esto, ya le hablé de, de beginning and the renaissance. Uh, y yo creo que también le hablé de esto acá. Vamos a hablar sobre los Italian, I think. Uh, yeah, let's go quickly, real quick. ¿Se acuerdan cuál fue el último capítulo? No se acuerdan cuál fue la transparencia que yo hablé. Yo ya les hablé de la Divina Comedia. Con Juan y les hablé de la Divina Comedia ayer? No. No, okay. So that means that I need to start over here, from here, from the ready, the uh, Italian, the Italian writers over here. Oh my God. Let me open this, okay. Okay, you only pay attention. Remember, this PowerPoint is already in your platform. So, in those years, remember uh, the big families. There were in each of these con these uh, cities. There was a big family who were the ones who wanted to promote the culture in those areas. Remember this. Everything began in Florence. Okay, the family. I don't remember the name of the family. Let me go back. Aha, uh -huh. the Medici, the Medici, the Medici family. They were the one who carry on all this movement in order to promote. Uh, Florence and they brought a different architecture, artists and things, uh, all this kind of professional in order to make this, this town or this city, Florence, one of the most important and interesting places in the world and also in Italy, okay? Now, let's begin with the, the writers. Also, they promote the writers. Now, one of the, the main, the main uh, writers, in this in this uh, era, the Renaissance was Dante Alighieri, and Dante Alighieri he wrote this very and the difference between Dante Alighieri and the the kind of writer from the uh, the previous uh, the uh, the the um, the la Edad Media. Uh, the difference that, that, that in, in la Edad Media they used to write using the Latin. Now, the difference over here is that he, because they, they said in, in the Middle Ages, they, they said, okay, the only one who are allowed to, to read are the ones who knows the Latin. But in this era, the Renaissance Dante, he started writing in, in, in Italian. So that's, that's the difference. So in that way, everybody could be able to, to read the great uh, uh, articles of the great uh, uh, novels, okay? So Dante, the major worker, he wrote this, La Divina Comedia, the Divine Comedy, describe an imaginary journey, yeah, imaginary journey that he took through the afterlife, después de la muerte. On this journey, Dante meets people from his past, as well as great figures from history. En este libro. Yo creo que ustedes todavía no lo han leído, pero eventualmente quizás lo lean. Si tienen la oportunidad, es una cosa 
grandota, pero bueno, pues es muy interesante. In fact, the Romans and poet Virgil, este es una persona muy importante en, en Roma, dice que era el que lo guiaba. Is the one who guides on the journey. In the course of his writing, Dante described many of the problems he saw in Italian society. Ahí describe muchos problemas que veía en la sociedad italiana y que actualmente, si tú lees la Divina Comedia, verás que los mismos problemas de aquella época se dan en esta época actual. Okay? So this is like a this is a picture that try to describe one chapter in the Divina Comedia. Okay? Se, se supone que esto en el infierno o la vida después de la muerte y se ve fuego y se ven cosas aquí. ¿Ya? Ok, ok. Now, el segundo escritor muy importante en el Renacimiento fue Niccolo Maquiavelo. Ok. Niccolo Maquiavelo, ¿cuál fue su obra máxima? Fue El Príncipe. Y que el libro le da a los líderes advice, consejos, on how they should rule, cómo ellos deben manejar a lo que él lidera. Dice, Maquiavelo did, didn't care about theory and what should work. For example, Maquiavelo thought that sometimes ruler had to be ruthless to keep order. Aquí en este libro del príncipe, Maquiavelo dice que a veces los líderes tienen que ser, tienen que ser esto, personas malas. O sea, tienen que ser, no tienen que tener escrúpulos para poder mantener el orden. Hay ocasiones que dice él, según él. Okay. Now, the prince, they said, in the prince, Machiavelli offer advice for rulers on how to stay in power. Le ofrece eh, eh, consejo de cómo un líder tiene que mantener, tiene que hacer para que mantenerse en el poder. In this famous passage, he explain why in his view, it's better to rule to be feared than to be loved. Dice que una sección, él habla que, que es mejor ser un, 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 un líder temido, feared, que es ser un, un, un líder amado, según él. Esa es la opinión de él. Ok. Ok, now, Italian art and artists were among the finest in the world. Italian art and music. Now, during the Renaissance, Italian artists and composer create some of the most beautiful artists in the world. Rich family and church leaders hire artists to create this work. New techniques make their work Come alive. Interesting. The Renaissance idea about the value of human life are reflected in the art of time. Art show people more realistically than, than medieval artists had. Renaissance artists study the human body. Los, los, los artistas del Renacimiento okay, estudiaron mucho el cuerpo humano. Andrew what they saw, y ellos por eso que dibujaban mucho, por eso que todas las esculturas, las pinturas, son bien definidas en esta época, se ven definidas. Okay. Vamos a hablar de dos personas muy importantes, los que hay. creo que ya lo vimos en el video, que son Miguel Ángel y Leonardo da Vinci. El maestro Miguel Ángel, one of the greatest Italian Italian was Michelangelo, no el Michelangelo de los Ninja Turtles. He was a child, he was a many, he had many talents, tenía muchos talentos, Michael Mike, Michelangelo designed buildings, diseñó eh, estructuras, eh, edificios, he wrote poetry and carved sculpture, y, y hacía esculpía, esculpía, and paint magnificent pictures, like, like one over here en la Capilla Sixtina. Si usted tiene la oportunidad de ir al Vaticano, vayan a la Capilla Sixtina y miren así hacia, hacia el techo. En el techo van a ver todas las obras de arte que pintó el maestro Miguel Ángel. He says, perhaps it's the most famous work is a painting that covered the ceiling, el techo of the Capina 16, ¿a dónde? En el Vaticano. The muscular human figures in this immense painting remains the view of Greek and Roman studies, okay? Miren, otra de las esculturas que él hizo el, el David. Mira la definición del cuerpo del ser humano en aquella época. Imagínate, eran tremendos artistas. Aquí también se ve la definición del cuerpo. Por eso que estudiaban el cuerpo del, del ser humano. ¿Ok? Muy bien. Otro genio era el famoso Leonardo da Vinci. Este señor era un genio, genio a morir. Dice, the true genius of the Renaissance was Leonardo da Vinci. In fact, some call him the greatest genius that had ever lived. Déjenme decirle, chicos, personal, personalidad como Leonardo da Vinci no va a existir más en esta vida, ¿ok? Él fue único. Leonardo was a scholar, fue escultor, fue pintor, fue arquitecto, inventor, fue ingeniero, 
Y también dice que diseñó muchos planos de, de, muchos, de muchas ciudades y le hacían los mapas también. Y tipo como él, no, no va a volver a existir. Una de sus grandes obras es la Gioconda, o la Mona Lisa, como se dice. Jean Leonardo's painting also shows human emotions. O sea, esta figura, mire, solamente de verla, pareciera que estuviese viva. O sea, o sea cómo él logró esa, esa impresión en un lienzo. Algo increíble. Which was common during the Renaissance. For example, people who saw, who see these Mona Lisa's can help wondering what made the lady smile. ¿Qué es lo que hacía? Parece como una pequeña sonrisa, pero no, no, no se está riendo a carcajada. Y se preguntan, ¿qué le habrá hecho? ¿Qué le habrá hecho Leonardo para que ella haga ese tipo de sonrisa? Some, some things, this smile was Leonardo's way of showing the harmony between the humanity and the painting's nature background. Pero también él, 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 él tuvo la oportunidad de, de hacer muchos, muchos estos mapas del cuerpo humano. Esto es famoso, creo que lo estoy en tiempo lo Leonardo da Vinci sketch the body. Okay. Leonardo da Vinci quest to learn more about anatomy benefited more than just his art. He left an illustrated set of unpublished papers that show what he had learned about the human body. For example, Leonardo found that the heart, not the liver, controlled the flow of The flow, of, through the, uh, the flow of blood through the body. Muchos pensaban que era el hígado que controlaba. No, era el corazón el que controla la cantidad de, de, de sangre en el cuerpo. Okay? Now, Leonardo's observation led to further advanced in anatomy and medicine. Todo esto, imagínense, todo esto lo logró él plasmar en su, en su documento. En aquella época, imagínense, en aquella época. Increíble. Perfecto. Ok, chicos, ahora voy a ponerle un video que le puse al otro grupo que habla sobre, ya hablamos sobre Michael, eh, sobre Leonardo da Vinci. Now, vamos, a, vamos a conocer algo sobre la vida de eh, Mike Miguel Ángel. Even though the Mona Lisa may be the most famous artwork in the world, I would argue this bit of painting would be a close second. You've got to check this out. Support provided by the Glick Fund, a CICF fund focused on inspiring philanthropy. Additional support provided by the Crystal DeHaan Family Foundation in honor of the children and families of Crystal House. We'll just call him Michelangelo. Was born March 6, 1475 in Caprice, Italy. Buongiorno, no, or whatever. Yeah, he wasn't always the happiest artist, but we'll get back to that later. Michelangelo had four brothers and his father was a magistrate and his mother stayed at home with the kids. Now, when Michelangelo was an infant, she became pretty sick. In fact, Michelangelo ended up having to have a wet nurse, uh, so he ended up living with a family of stonecutters. Interestingly, Michelangelo said it was because of this stonecutter wet nurse that he drank in the hammer and chisel. Yeah, not too sure about that one. By the way, did you know Michelangelo didn't want to be known as a painter? In fact, he would probably be insulted if you first referred to him as a painter and not a sculptor. Seriously, you did not just refer to me as painter, did you? Like many 16-year-olds, Michelangelo didn't really care for school, so he often would skip class and head to a nearby church to watch the painters. His family detested art and felt like he was a disgrace to the family. It was definitely not a suitable profession for a man. I think once Michelangelo started to make a name for himself as an artist, he loved to remind everybody back home. You can tell since he would always sign his letters home with Michelangelo Sculptor in Rome. That's right, and don't you forget about it. After realizing that Michelangelo had some artistic talent, his dad encouraged him to find an apprenticeship where he could learn more about art. He went from a painter's workshop to then studying within a powerful, rich, elite family within Florence, the Medici family. Did I mention they were the rulers of Florence? Yeah, they were. Working with this family gave him special privileges, 
One of those was being able to study dead bodies at the church waiting to be buried. This fueled his passion to understand human anatomy, and unfortunately, the stench and nastiness of the experience started to make him sick. Enough of that. Just a few short years later, when Michelangelo was only 25 years old, it was apparent he had a black belt in sculpture. After relocating to Rome, one of the cardinals within the Catholic Church commissioned him to create a sculpture. Michelangelo, being pretty cocky at this time, said, It will be the most beautiful work in marble Rome I have ever seen. A bit confident, right? Actually, it's this sculpture, La Pieta. Have you ever seen this one before? You bet you have. Check it out. Michelangelo sculpted this from a single piece of marble stone. What amazes me is it only took him one year to complete this six foot by six foot sculpture. Have any idea what the, the title means? Well, Pieta simply means pity or compassion, which makes sense considering the, the subject being Christ and his mother Mary. So you're probably asking yourself, uh, what makes this sculpture so incredible? Let me explain. Check out the details in the folds and the ribs and muscles on the body. All this movement these details create. Trying to sculpt these details uh, was incredibly hard. And trust me, people knew it, which is why many pilgrims would come to Rome just to see this sculpture. After returning to Rome, he hears about a sculpture that two other artists had abandoned because it was too difficult. Fueled with confidence from La Pieta, he takes over the job. David took three years to sculpt, probably due to its size of 17 feet. David quickly becomes the pride of Florence, and they even nicknamed it the Giant. After Michelangelo finishes this sculpture, his fame starts to build. In fact, word got around to the Pope, Pope Julius II. Immediately, Pope Julius commissions Michelangelo to create his tomb. This was huge for Michelangelo, especially since all he wanted to do was sculpt. And designing the tomb for the Pope was a huge honor. Michelangelo is so pumped to get going, he starts gathering a team, pouring the stone needed, and, and working on his idea. Okay, let's stop right here, guys. I'd like you to, to, to watch the whole video, but we don't have time. Uh, it's almost 12, 15 days. That's already 12, 15, guys. So you have to go to all the class. So please remember, you need to complete the vocabulary and also the assessment that is already in the platform. Please do it, guys, okay? And as I said, guys, let me...